Two significant weather systems are set to impact the United States over the next five days. What's in store for your neck of the woods? Let's dive right in. Latest details here at the Weather Farm. As we look at our jet stream here on our Wednesday, we are watching a northwesterly flow across the eastern half of the United States. That low pressure that brought the snow to the Dakotas and Minnesota it is moving into Quebec. Out to the west, we have a ridge that is beginning to build as we get to our Friday. A deep trough in the east will bring cooler weather, but we're watching this next dip as it moves through the Rockies Saturday into the plains and eventually to the Ohio Valley as we make our way into Sunday. This is going to be the second of our two storms, and it's going to spell trouble anywhere east of the Mississippi as we travel home from your Thanksgiving holiday. But as we get towards the middle of next week, we watch yet another ridge starting to build out across the west. That ridge will start to move towards the We get a jab of polar air Monday into Tuesday across the Great Lakes, but out across parts of the southwest off the coast of California. As we get to the middle of next week, we watch yet another storm beginning to form, and that will set the stage for the first full weekend of December. As we begin our Wednesday, we are watching snow fly across Minnesota and Wisconsin, even the upper peninsula of Michigan. You can tell by these tight pressure lines here on the map that we have a lot of wind associated with this system. In fact, there are numerous blizzard warnings and winter storm warnings across this area where areas could receive up to 12 to 8 snow during the day on Wednesday before this low moves off into Ontario and then eventually into Quebec by the time we get towards the weekend. Here is a look at those warnings. If we see them hoisted, those reds, those are your blizzard warnings. That's your winter storm warnings. Those do include the Minneapolis area, places like uh, Rhinelander, Wisconsin, up into Marquette, Michigan. Across Il Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana, in Ohio, we have a wind advisory. As that low pressure continues to move off to the east, those winds are going to wrap around, bringing winds 40 to 50 miles per hour for your Wednesday. Across the south and out west, we have dense fog advisories that should last to midday on our Wednesday. So let's put all of our map into motion. We watch that snow continuing to fly across the Great Lakes, down across the southeast. We're going to watch for the chance of some storms Wednesday after into our Thursday morning. And out west, we watch yet another system making its way onto the Washington coast for our Friday. That is going to be the low pressure system that will eject out over the Rockies and bring snow to the Rockies Friday into Saturday morning. And those winds are going to be strong on our Wednesday into Thursday, 30 to 40. Even 50 miles per hour are possible across the Great Lakes. Those move into the northeast. They do weekend. Out west, we do watch for a new set of winds beginning to form just east of the Rockies Friday into Saturday. Those will move to the central plains. Wind gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour are likely. But it's that energy with that next system that makes its way out of the central plains into the Ohio and Tennessee valleys into our Saturday and Sunday. Winds could again gust near 50 miles per hour through the Ohio Valley into the northeast as we close out our week. In terms of our severe weather for our Wednesday, we do have a marginal risk of severe weather here in the Panhandle of Florida through southern Alabama into far western parts of Georgia. Also across parts of southern Texas, we do have a marginal risk of severe weather. Now the biggest threat across the southeast is going to be a low tornado chance. Less than 2% chance is likely across parts of Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. As we make our way into southern Texas, this is going to be a hail event. So we're going to watch for afternoon thunderstorms to pop across this region as they move across the far southern tip of Texas. In terms of our snowfall with that system that is making its way out of the Great Lakes into Canada, we could see widespread areas 8 to 12 inches into the arrowhead of Minnesota, into far parts of northern Wisconsin, we could see up to eight snow. In those areas that are favored by lake effect snow off of Lake Superior, we could snowfall in excess of t in a narrow corridor. Even as we make our way into Michigan here, places like Grand Rapids, up towards Tra Traverse City, into the northern parts of Michigan, in those favored lake effect snow regions, you could see six to 12 inches of snow for your Wednesday. In terms of our precipitation over the next 24 to 48 hours, we're going to see the heaviest liquid amounts across the Great Lakes with that snowfall. But out west, it's that next system that's way on shore bringing heavy amounts of rain to Washington State. In fact, we could see widespread areas of 2 to 4 inches of rain for the western half of Washington by the time we get to our Monday. As we make our way down into Oregon, 1 inch amounts are more likely, especially in the northwestern parts of Oregon, but generally less than a half elsewhere across the region. In terms of our temperatures, the cold air is beginning to plunge across the Dakotas. Highs here are in the 20s. Don't be fooled by the temperatures on this map across Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. These are going to be highs around midnight in your location. Temperatures are going to be falling throughout the day as we get the cold air wrapping around that area of low pressure as it makes its way through Canada. Out across the East Coast, though, temperatures are warm. High temperatures are going to be in the 70s across the Carolinas. We could even be pushing the mid-60s up towards Philadelphia. 80s are going to be common across Florida and far southern Texas. 
Out west across parts of California and Nevada, temperatures in the 50s and 60s. As we make our way to our Thursday Thanksgiving Day here in the United States, widespread 20s across the northern tier, especially where you have that deep snowpack from that system laying down that heavy snow across Minnesota and Wisconsin, across the Ohio and Tennessee Valleys, 30s and 40s. A little cooler than normal, but nothing too terrible for this time of the year. We're still warm in the northeast. High temperatures in the 50s and 60s, as well as 60s across parts of Texas. Dallas, you could be in the low 60s for your Thanksgiving Day. And as we go into our Friday, that cool air continues to spill into the half of the United States. Temperatures in the mid-40s for Eastern and Missouri. And it is this warmer area that we're going to watch as that next system comes out of the Rockies. How much of this warm air transfers into the Ohio Valley? And what kind of precipitation will we see with the second of our Thanksgiving storms? So let's take a look at our map. As we begin Saturday, we have that area of low pressure that is centered across the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma. It is spreading snow out across parts of Missouri into Iowa and Illinois. Rain in the southern part of that storm. But look at these 500 millibar height contour lines these red, and then it transitions to blue. This is where we typically will see the transition from rain to snow at that 540 decameter line. So we watch this 540 decameter line for that snow, rain snow line, and we see that across parts of northern Missouri into far western Illinois, but rain to the south. So as this low pressure continues to move off to the, it has a counterclockwise rotation, so the air is coming up out of the southwest ahead of it, bringing that warmer air we saw those temperatures in the 40s. Ahead of it, though, we have a high pressure that's rotating clockwise. So as we get those two systems kind of getting closer to each other, we're kind of getting a funneling effect. So that's going to allow a lot more of the warmer air to move further north, even though the map would indicate we have cold air in place across the Great Lakes. So let's put it all into motion. We watch this system continue to dive into the panhandle. As we make our way to Saturday afternoon, heavy snows across Iowa, northern Missouri, northern Illinois, making their way into Michigan. But we still see those blue uh, height contour lines indicating the likelihood of snow across the I-70 corridor. But I will tell you that the models have been differing on the solution with this particular storm. Yesterday, when we looked at the models, it was much further south, and the snow line was much further south with the model. During the day on our Tuesday into early Wednesday, we've seen a little tick to the north with the track of that system. That's because the high pressure that is building in behind it is wanting to tug that little low pressure system a little bit more poleward uh, in the atmosphere and that's the way we see that track going through the Great Lakes. This is going to be something we're going to continue to monitor over the next several days. So I mentioned temperatures are going to be critical with this next system. We have mid 30s across the central parts of Illinois and Indiana into Ohio for our Saturday afternoon highs. 40s as we make our way down towards the Ohio River. 40s across Missouri and those are going to be early highs as temperatures we do expect will be falling across this area as that low pressure moves through. We do have the cold air already in place across parts of Iowa, northern Illinois, so we do believe you will stay all snow with this particular system. But I want you to watch here. It's Friday. This is the 700 millibar temperature map. So as we get to these dark blues, that's where that rain snow line is. So we have cold air in place here across the Ohio Valley. But we're going to watch this little nose of darker blues start to race towards Illinois and Indiana as we make our way into Saturday afternoon and overnight Sunday. And it is enough of that warmer air that might make its way north that could temporarily turn that snow back to rain before turning back to snow and ending on our day Sunday. So the track is going to be extremely important with this particular system on where we see the heaviest axis of snow. So once that system makes its way through, in its wake, we're going to have extremely cold temperatures across the northern tier of the United States. Low temperatures for our Monday morning could be below zero across a good chunk of the Dakotas into western Minnesota. Even into Wisconsin, we could see widespread sub-zero temperatures, especially where you have the deepest snow. We start to see some of these grays here in western Minnesota. That could be temperatures 20 or colder below zero. But we're even seeing teens making their way down through Illinois, some single digits, even some sub-zero temperatures in far northwestern Illinois. But as we go into our Monday, our highs will only be in the mid-20s across most of the Ohio Valley. Looking up to the north and west across the Dakotas, high temperatures could struggle to get to zero degrees with widespread single digits through north and south Dakota, even into western parts of Minnesota. And once we get past this weekend, we start the new week, weather pattern turns a little quieter. We will watch an area of disturbed weather across the southeast. It does want to bring some snow into the higher mountain regions here across the Appalachians Monday into Tuesday. And then we watch yet another system making its way across the central plains as we get to the middle of next week. A couple of systems that we will continue to watch, but it is that one off the coast of California. As we get toward the end of next week, 
that we are watching for a major in our overall weather pattern. The other thing I want to talk about is this was the Arctic Oscillation map two weeks ago, and we saw much of the time period Arctic Oscillation being negative, indicating we would see much colder conditions across the lower 48. But look, two weeks, that is all trended to Arctic Oscillation positive. So what that means is the polar vortex is going to be very strong, and it's going to keep a lot of that cold air up around the Arctic Circle and not really allow those jabs of colder air to the lower parts of the United States. So this is something we're going to continue to watch because that pattern takes us all the way into the new year with an Arctic Oscillation of positive. So we're going to be watching this, especially as we get closer to the Christmas and holiday season. Many people are wondering, will you see a white Christmas in your area? We're going to continue to watch these patterns as they continue to develop because we've seen quite a significant change over the last. The other interesting one that we monitor is the Western Pacific Oscillation. So again, two weeks ago, it was getting towards neutral by the middle of December and then remaining there through the end of December, but significantly negative before that. Still maintaining that pattern, but as we get towards the second half of December into the new year, that indicator is trending positive. And so what this means is that when the Western Pacific Oscillation is negative, we're going to see a much colder and snowier pattern in the United States. The western half is going to be drier than normal, and it's going to be warmer. But when we have the Western Pacific Oscillation negative and the Arctic Oscillation positive, that really works the counterbalance. And so we're going to watch to see how strong these intrusions of colder air from the north are into the lower 48 throughout the month of December because they will play in a snowpack that builds across southern Canada, the snowpack that builds across the northern plains, and what that weather pattern will look like as we make our way deeper into meteorological winter, January and February. Our CDOS values that we measure in the Pacific Ocean, they are trending negative 1.2 as of the latest reading. They are staying in that La Nina pattern. So this is also a sign that the weather pattern is going to be a little more active and wetter across the central parts of the United States. We're going to get a little more uh, bridging across the western half of the United States, dislodging that colder air, how frequent that happens, and to the intensity, a lot to be determined, but we'll bring you the latest here at the Weather Farm. And all of this thinking aligns with what the Climate Prediction Center is, is saying for the first 10 days of December. Much of the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley into the northeast are expected to be below normal in temperatures. The southeast through Texas out across the west, above normal in temperatures. Most of the United States is expected to be above normal in its precipitation during the first 10 days of the month. A very active pattern, a lot of uh, Pacific moisture and Gulf moisture being pumped up as the jet stream undulates across the United States during the first 10 days of December. So stay tuned and we will continue to bring you the latest information as it becomes available. Well, we thank you for joining us here at the Weather Farm for your Wednesday. We hope you have a safe travel day wherever it is that you're going for this holiday. Stay safe, enjoy your time with your family, your friends, your loved ones, and we will see you again.